Hallelujah. Are we here with God? Hallelujah. If you know that you are alive, shout hallelujah. The Lord is good all the time. Before we sit down, let us open to the first Bible reading. Psalm 116, this is a Bible reading church, a Bible believing and reading church. Let us get our Bible. Psalm 116. Mommy, if you feel you need to sit, that's fine. For, for those that are filled with great strength. Psalm 116. If you are there, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So everyone is there. We are going to read from verse number 5. And we are going to read to verse number 19 to understand something. If you're there, let us start. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, from my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of my salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servant. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thanks offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the court of the house of the Lord, in the midst of Jerusalem, Praise the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Please be seated before God. While we wanted to begin this sermon, that was when the Holy Spirit says we need to read it together. So I had to change my Bible to an NIV version because that is the version that we are currently using, which we might change in due time. I pray that God will be with us all in the mighty name of Jesus. Can somebody say gratitude? gratitude? The gift that glorifies. You see, gratitude today, this is the theme. That's the theme of today. Gratitude, the gift that glorifies. And I pray that myself and you, God Almighty, will grant us great understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. The first and the second Bible reading takes us through a journey of thanksgiving. We have the psalmist that had a deep cry of gratitude to God. And on the other side, which is the New Testament, we have the Samaritan, which is the leper, which was healed by Jesus. You see, both of these lessons or scriptural reading um, tells us all about turning to God in gratitude and living a life that reflects the response that God needs, the response of grace. And again, today, we are going to look at it closely, and I pray that God will give myself and you the understanding in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout, hallelujah? Now, one of the things that I want us to look at, because today is going to be a, maybe a different kind of teaching, is the first thing that I saw here while I was reading it again yesterday was that it shows the compassionate nature of our God. Look at that verse 5 of the 116, the psalm that we read. It said, the Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of what? Compassion. You see, let me tell you something. If God 
has not been compassionate towards us, many things would have gone wrong. Imagine if God had allowed your enemy to prevail over you. Just imagine that with many things that they do, you start a business, they don't want the pregnancy to grow because they felt that you need to come and consult them first, make them the Lord and personal savior of your life before that business will grow. And because you have chosen to follow God, they will say, no, they are not going to agree. Just imagine if God had allowed the enemies to prevail at a time. Remember the time that you were sleeping and you were struggling, it's as if, you know, you felt something pressing you down. And you tried to move, but nothing could happen. And all of a sudden, you were able to move. Imagine if you were not able to move. If God has not intervened, what do you think would have happened? So the psalmist wrote this, not from the abundance, not from the place of abundance, from a, from a place of need. He was facing death. He was facing trouble. He was facing sorrow. And what did he say? God is compassionate. See, many of us, we only want to serve God when everything is good. At the touch of a little bit of troubles, we will denounce God, we will become more, in fact, we will become the elder brother of Peter that, I, that says, no, I've never seen Christ before. In fact, who is Christ? I've never heard about him. I pray that God will minister to us in the name of Jesus. So the question is, what kind of God do you serve? That question cannot be answered by myself. I can only answer for me. What kind of God do you serve? Is he a God that turns away when you are in pain? Or is it that God that steps in when you are in trouble? Because it seems people begin to switch their ways of doing by the happenings in their life. God provides, I bless God. God did not provide, I will not bless God. God gives me joy, I will praise God. Oh, there's no joy, I'm not going to God. What about this God that has intervened for you in the times of trouble? Regardless of how old you are, whether you are a day old, two days old, seven years old, ten years old, especially for us that are adults, begin to look at some times that you should have been erased due to some things that occurred in your life. But God, even in our pain, intervened in mercy. Imagine those times that even we were praying, we were paying for the things that we have done wrong. The enemy took advantage of those things. But God intervened in his mercy. If truly you are serving that God, we are supposed to be all here for Sunday. That's supposed to be our Sunday of Thanksgiving and praise God. But guess what? Somebody has a reason that they are staying at home. I can understand people that went to work. I can understand people that ask one thing or the other, which is, needs to be done. But if you are just staying at home that, you know what, I'm, I would join them and all of that. Remember that we have a song, I think it's in five, that said, Nibola Oduro de Jesu Tawa Yofiri. It is only in worship. And we we'll understand that through even this. Not only, and that is why I did not call it thanksgiving, I called it gratitude, a gift that glorifies. It's, it's, there's a little bit different. I can say thank you and still not be gratitude to what you've done. At least we've been, we've been in our home, within our family, that we will say that whenever I do something to this person, he will just shabbily say thank you and just walk. He doesn't even show appreciation, which means the person is saying thank you, but there's no gratitude in it. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you today, one of the things that the Holy Spirit gave me understanding is that, that gratitude is a response to mercy. Gratitude should be your response to mercy. And that is found in the book of Luke, the second Bible reading, Luke chapter 17. Here we find 
our Lord Jesus Christ passing by Jerusalem. He was passing through the border of um, Samaria and Galilee. And then he saw those ten lepers. If you look at Luke, Luke 17, read verse 13 for me, or somewhere around there. Luke 13, you can start 12, 13, and then 14. Do, do we have a Bible? Please have your mic if you want to read. You can give somebody mic if they want to read that mic there. Uh-huh. English, English, please. Luke 17. Are we not ready to read before? Thirteen. I don't know. We have assigned people to read As Bible now. As he was going into a village, uh huh. Ten men who had leprosy met him. As he was going through a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Uh huh. They stood at a distance. Yes. And called out in a loud voice. Uh huh. Jesus. Jesus. Master. Master. Have pity on us. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Uh huh. When he saw them. Yes. He said. Uh huh. Go show yourself to the priest. Let us leave it there. Just sit down. God bless us in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I want you to understand this: that in the time of old, if you are a leper, you don't come near people that are okay. You have to be at the edge of the city, far away from people. So these ten lepers saw Jesus flowing, walking. Passing through Samaria, the boundary of Samaria and Galilee, and Galilee, and they called to him, "Have mercy upon us." And you know what Jesus did? In their pain, Jesus turned to them. And what did Jesus did? The only thing he did was to speak to them. Go and show thyself to the priest. For any leper to go into the city, that means they are healed. So what Jesus did was in their troubles, Christ came, had mercy upon them, and made them perfect. May God help us in the name of Jesus. I pray concerning someone here or that is listening online. Whether you are filled with some sickness and you are asking God to help you. Whether there are some things that you need God to do for good in your life. Whether there is a special thing that you've been asking God for. May God bless you with it in the name of Jesus Christ. But the surprising thing in that Luke 17 is that every once they were going and each of them discovered that they had been healed, nine left and did not worry. Only one came back. Can somebody read from verse 17? Um, Read maybe from 15. Jesus asked, Uh were not all ten cleansed? Uh Where are the other nine? Are you reading from 17 or are you reading from 15? 17. Read from 15. He threw himself at Jesus' feet. Uh This is the one Samaritan that returned. Chewed himself at Jesus' feet. Uh And thanked them. And thanked him. Uh And he was a Samaritan. And this man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Uh huh. Were not ten cleansed? Yes. Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? As none as no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner. Uh huh. Then he said to him, Yes. Rise and go. Your faith. Let us leave it. May God bless us in the name of Jesus. Because we are still going to get to that. If God has done something good for you. There's nothing that you need to do but to give praise to God. You have to give a genuine. That man, you, you know those nine, they might have said, oh, thank you, God, oh, thank you, God, oh, and, and gone away. They, you know, some, some of them might have said that. But only one came back to the source. Only one. I pray that because you will show gratitude to God, may grace voice for you in the name of Jesus. Gratitude 
I will tell you, it's a heart that is filled with thanksgiving, not a mouth that is filled with thanksgiving. So gratitude is an expression. It is not just words. And that was why even in the book of Psalm, whether it is Psalm 116 that we read or about that one Samaritan, it was a show, expression that makes our Lord Jesus knew that this person is worthy of more. If you look at that Psalm 116 that we read, around verse 7, he said, I will sacrifice the thanks offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. Many people here will thank God but even in their praise, you cannot even tell which God they are thanking. May God be with us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanksgiving in the times of old is not given out of the surplus. You know, like many of us do now. Our Thanksgiving is given out of surplus. In the times of old, every Thanksgiving is taken from the very core of someone's possession. Which means it's something that when you give it to God, whether it has to do with your praise, whether it has to do with your dancing, whether it has to do with your sweat, it's something that you will feel that truly you are yielding something to God. It is costly. It is always a recognition that everything belongs to what? God. So it's not just beyond words. So for many of us, that you see some people you'll be talking and say, ah, don't worry, oh, ah, I'm Sele with my whole heart. But I just don't go to Sele. I go to other churches. Maybe you'll be fine. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's like saying, oh, ah, that means my husband, though. I love him more tightly, oh, but I just sleep with another different kind of men. Eh? Imagine that. How does that sound? You see how we felt. Eh? I'm Sele but I just go to other churches. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. What, how would it look like um, if we were to live with a heart of gratitude? I want you to imagine, let's just use our church. Imagine a church whereby everyone recognizes God's hands in their life. A community whereby everyone recognizes there's nothing that will occur in their life that they will not say this is God. Even when things are not going right, they said, you know, God is still working. But do you know many of us, when things are not going right, we begin to say something else. We say, God, why me? Me. A whole me. Eh? Supreme evangelist. Special vulnerable. Assistant special venerable. Special holy. Anointed prophet in the Lord. Eh? May God help us in the name of somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And I want to tell you this. If you have received from God, then you have to return to God. Can you look at somebody that said, return to God? Return to God. Find somebody else that said, return to God. Many of us, all that we do is receive from God. We don't return. There's no return. It wakes you up in the morning, you don't say thank you. You drive safely, you don't say thank you. Your children is not sick, you don't say thank you. It gives you a husband or a spouse, you don't say thank you. You God avoid an accident for you, you don't say thank you. All that you think about it is, is your will, your power, your strength. May God help all of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus told this Samaritan in verse 19 of the Luke 17, he said, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. I want you to think about that. There were ten walking. And the Lord healed those ten. Are you with me? And one came back to Jesus to show gratitude. And that is the only one that Jesus was able to tell, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. What do you think happened to that man? 
which means wellness is beyond physical health, which means you can be well in your body and your soul can be corrupt, which means you can be well. You know, there are some walking cops. You find people that are standing, they're looking beautiful, they're looking handsome, and then maybe the dad that you're asking, I saw him yesterday and he was still agile, he was still doing this. May that never be our case in the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? This man fell at the feet of Jesus. I believe that when he fell at the feet of Jesus, he was actually, he was actually reciting the Psalm 116 that we read, verse 12, that how can I repay the Lord for all his goodness in my life? So his bowing down was not just, he was he, he, he's filled with so much gratitude. He just wants to remain there. And Jesus told him, rise up. Let me tell you, if you don't know how to bow to Jesus, if you don't know how to bow to God, if you don't know how to obey, if you don't know how to reference, if you don't know how to revive God, how do you rise up? Psalm 116 verse 14 said, I will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The night did not fulfill their, 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 their thanksgiving in the front of the people. They left. But one came and fulfilled his vow and thanked Jesus in the presence of the people. I pray that someone here that needs God, may God answer for you greatly in the name of Jesus. So what God did for him was to restore his soul, not just his physical side. He restored him spiritually. So now he is fortified. That sickness does not come back anymore. Now what God did was Christ now, him coming to Christ, is creating a relationship between him and Christ. A link that sin or death cannot break. This is something that gratitude does. But when you are not gratif when, when you don't greet gratification to him that is due of the gratitude what do you think is going to happen that is why some people they felt it's only prayer and fasting and that prayer and fasting has not helped because it is not about how many days that you fast or how many days that you pray or how many incantation that you can speak it is mostly about your relationship to God. If you want anything from me and you have a good relationship with me, you don't have to cry. All you have to do is, you say, shepherd in Christ, I need this. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. So what does gratitude do? What does gratitude do? Before we talk about the things that gratitude do, have you ever wondered why by it is mentioned that that one was the Samaritan. You see, in the times of old, the Samaritans are seen as the unworthy. You know, we have Israel is split into two kingdoms. We have the Southern Kingdom and we have the Northern Kingdom. The Northern Kingdom is the one that always does things wrong. They are the ones that get themselves yoked to the unbelievers. They are the ones that begin to intermarry and miss the unbelievers. And so they brought in every other god and now form their own way of worshipping Yahweh. And so those at the south, which is Judah, does not recognize them as clean. Are you with me? These are the people that stood against Nehemiah when Nehemiah was about to build the temple. Because now you that has been sent out. You are now coming back to retake your position. We will not let you take your And that is why when you see the Jews, they don't truly love the Samaritans because they see the Samaritans as people that have gone to yoke themselves with ungodly. So when it comes to negativity, just like in this country, that everything, everything that is not good is yielded to the black. So it is... In the, in the life of the Jews. Anything bad they'll say is a Samaria. So out of the nine, there was one Samaria. 
And that which people as labeled not good was the one that came back to God. I want to tell you that many of us that will label this one not good for God. That one is not good for our church. That one is not good for the choir. This one is not good to do this. That one cannot be this. This one cannot be this. Let me tell you, those that you are neglected sometimes, when God flows to them and they have a great change of heart, they might become better in the house of God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Imagine that. That which many are thought to be nothing, God used it. How would you feel within you that somebody is unworthy? Yes, they might not be unworthy in your eyes, but do you know, do you know what God is working behind the scene? Many of us that today we are standing right with God and had our own time. And so you cannot label anybody for hell. I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. Can you look at somebody? Don't label anybody for hell. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So what does gratitude do? I just want to quickly bring this to a close. Number one thing, if you want to write it down, gratitude will transform your relationship with God. Gratitude will do what? Sit down, Ian. Gratitude will transform your relationship with God. I want you to understand this. God's compassion extends like a father bending down to a crying child. That's how God is. God is ever ready to listen to us. God is ever ready to lift us up. God is gracious. God is merciful. He delights in rescuing us. But all that you have to do is call to him. Build a relationship with him. The only way you can build a relationship is to do like that Samaritan. Bow before him. Yield everything to him. In fact, I know that if Christ has told that Samaritan that follow me and leave everything, he would do, the, he would do that. You have to get to that level that you are yielding everything to God. Giving glory to God about all the happenings in your life, good or bad. Some people right now, they are in, the, they are in their moment of training. They don't even know that God is looking at them. They thought enemy is doing this. Enemy is, is it not God that allowed things to occur? And God is just looking at them. If you can be this way when you are facing so, just this trouble, how would you be when I give you all the world? Are you not going to run away? You see, many people will run away. They will want to become the commander of the life of many people. I pray that God will be with us in the name of Jesus. So gratitude transforms your relationship with God. That's number one. Number two, number two gratitude completes the miracle. Gratitude does what? Completes the miracle. So many of us, when God do anything for us, if we don't praise God, that thing might not last. Because we have a song. It says, Satani di amure Satani di amure Ishejun koko sifu ishu Satan is always guarding his loins, ready to attack. But when you do like that Samaritan and you come back to God and you praise God, then God will tell you, rise and be restored. It completes the miracle. It perfects the miracle. It makes things occur. So how many of us is praising God? How many of us is showing gratitude? The only one that came was the one that was not only physically healed, but was spiritually restored, which means there's nothing that's going to stand in his way of salvation. Number three, gratitude releases joy and fulfillment. Gratitude releases joy and fulfillment. Let me tell you, there's no one that knows how to praise God that is always 
in sorrow. Find somebody that loves to sing in their house, praise God all the time. You would hardly find sorrow lingering in their life. This is something that I've done over time, over time. There was, I tell, I forgot the name of, there's a movie that I usually tell people to watch when they're filled with anxieties and all of that. Whenever you begin to allow sorrow, your angels sometimes would give room for you because sorrow has its own demons that work with him. So if you have allowed sorrow, or whether it is fear, it has its own demon. Once you allow that, then the angel of faith will step away because you have given room to another. And imagine, once you give room to another, that one will begin to bring its produce into the person's life. I pray that sorrow will never know us in the name of Jesus. If you are happy, if you are rejoicing, if you are filled with gratitude, I'm telling you, God will just begin to make things work and work and work and work for you. In fact, the enemy that is waiting, hey, ah, what I did with this that just happened, this person, this person is supposed to, to, to cry. And then the, 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 the enemy see you rejoicing and they'll say, ah, what can I do to suppress the spirit of this person? I want to tell you today, this is an explanation that the Holy Spirit gave to me. Some of the things that occur to you is to suppress your spirit. Because once you begin to go with the flow of the things happening, the physical thing, and you begin to flow into sorrow or fear, then everything, in, even in your spiritual realm, begins to change. I pray that God will grant unto us satisfaction and the spirit to center our gratitude unto him in the name of Jesus. Can you look at somebody that said gratitude is a gift? So you need to ask God to bless you with the spirit of gratitude. It's a gift. So the number four thing is gratitude is a lifestyle that glorifies God. Gratitude is a lifestyle that glorifies God. The psalmist says, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Many of us, when God does things to us, the only thing we want to lift up is candles. Three candles, seven candles, one candles, you know, we lift up all of that. It's not a bad thing. How about you showing your salvation to others? Lifting up the cup of salvation, going out to save many, just reaching out and become a soul saver. He said, I will lift up the cup of my salvation. When you lift up something, that means you want to show it to people. Now look, this is what God has done. And this God that did this for me can do the same thing for you. Which means it's an invitation to bring many to God. Gratitude should become a lifestyle. And that is the only lifestyle that will glorify God. I'm going to tell you this. God is asking you to pause and ask yourself this question. Are you like that one leper who came back to Jesus in full gratitude? Or are you like the nine that went on their way but missed out on the greater blessings? Which one are you? You have to think that within you. I pray for somebody here that your joy shall be full in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody here that greatness shall visit you in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody here that God in his infinite mercy will renew his covenant with you in the name of Jesus. So I want to advise us. Show gratitude so that you will be restored. If you don't show gratitude, you can still be blessed, you can still do many things. But what about restoration? What about redemption? What about glorification? What about the end? Ending with Jesus. That man ended everything with Jesus, bowing to him, and Christ told him to rise up. I pray that you'll be lifted up in the name of Jesus. I pray for someone here that you'll be lifted up in the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody here that you'll be lifted up in the name of Jesus. May God bless you.
Thank you for listening. God bless us all.